big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. So there's one thing that I learned a number of years back that transformed my photography. And in this video, I wanna tell you all about it. Morning everybody, fantastic to finally see you all again. And um, yeah, I, what a few weeks and few months that I've had. Obviously, you probably already know I've had a couple of back operations and it's been a fairly traumatic time. I've got to admit, um, I, I had my first operation to try and fix a problem that I've had, a long-standing problem in my back um, with these cysts that I've had in my back that have been pressing on nerves and made it almost impossible for me to sit down. So I had that operation, but then I had what's called a CSF leak, which means that you have fluid leaking out of your spinal column. Um, and that came and I had basically a tennis ball sized lump on my back. So I had to have that operated on and that was horrible because I had to have this thing called a spinal drain. And that was done a few weeks ago and fingers crossed, I'm recovering from that okay. And I'm so pleased to be able to do a video again. I've been wanting to do a video for so long, but I've been good and trying to take it easy through the operations. Um, also, I was really busy with World Landscape Photographer, which I'm gonna come on to. But um, yeah, I I really can't believe the amount of support that I've had over the last few few um, months. It's just been incredible, to be honest. I, I, just, I just can't believe it. I've had thousands of messages. Thanks so much for everyone. It's really kept me going. Um, I can't, tell you how excited I am to go back out in the field at the moment. I'm not allowed to, I can't walk very far. So um, I'm, I'm just being really careful and uh, hopefully in a few weeks, I should be able to go and do some woodland photography. But what this has just made me realize is just how important it is to have a community of photographers or any communities around you. And it's really, really helped me so, so much. So whilst I was lying down, which I've done a lot of over the last 10 weeks, I managed to set my laptop up and get in a position where I could at least judge the world landscape photographer and do all the work around that. Um, luckily I had my son Sam helping me um, do a lot of the administrative work and then we had a set of amazing judges as well. But going through 8,000 images, you start to see sort of trends, you start to see things that you think, okay, there's a few people doing a certain thing, um, and that might be a good trend, or it might not be a good trend, it might be something where there's a few mistakes that you see, or a few things that you think, actually I could help that photographer out just by pointing the, this thing out. And that's what I wanna do in this video, really. Um, I want to be able to do a video of the winners, and that's gonna be a separate video completely, but to do that, I wanna print out some images um, because I wanna show the images printed. I feel like that's gonna really showcase these winning images. As you can see it here, the, the, the main one from Paul was just stunning. It was actually on the homepage of the BBC website, um, so, so, so amazing, well done, Paul. But I wanna go through those and why we chose those images in another video. In this video, what I've done is I've selected a set of images to try and go through some trends, some things that I've seen. And there's one thing that sort of galvanizes them all, and it's something that I learned as a photographer. And that is the ability to capture the viewer's attention and keep the viewer's attention. And obviously in a competition, that's so important. We've got lots and lots of images to go through you wanna be able to capture the judge's attention. But actually it's the same for any photograph. A good photograph, one that's hung in a gallery, one that you put on the wall, one that's in a magazine, you know, one, any photo, it's one that you wanna go and look at again. If you think of a photo of um, maybe a relative or one of your kids that's doing something for the first time, that's a photo that you're gonna go back to because it's telling an amazing story. And that's one of the elements that helps capture the attention. But when you look at it on a broader scale and you've got viewers that have all different backgrounds and may not have an initial relation to that image, then there's other techniques that you can use. And what I wanna do in this video is go through those techniques. And also make sure you stay to the end of the video because I've got a top trick that I use that I don't think anybody's ever shown before, and it's a really helpful way of just seeing where 
maybe the viewer's attention goes in an image. So just quickly, here's a couple of examples of um, actually two of the um, award-winning images. So this was the winner of the Vistas category from Cyan, and it's the stunning drone shot. And I think this captures the viewer's attention, but keeps the viewer's attention because there's quite a lot of little elements in, in the image and they balance quite nicely together. So you maybe go, first of all, to the light patch on the right-hand side, but you're dragged back to the left-hand side by that sort of vertical ridge that's catching light. And then you go into the middle part of the image and then you go round and you just look at the image uh, a lot, really. It's, it's a really good example. And this one here from Simon was a commended image in the Vistas category. And again, I feel like this is a good example. When I first saw this image, I, I, to be honest, I almost dismissed it because I, you know, it doesn't jump out at you. But then there's just little elements in this image that just pull you back into it. So I think the mountains stand out. You go to those mountains, then you go into the mist, and then you go and see that little river at the bottom. And then you go and examine the mountains again. And I feel like, again, this is a good example of something that just keeps your attention. There's nothing too distracting on the edges, and you, you're just coming back again and again to have a look at this image. It's just a gorgeous image. But that begs the question, why do some images just not quite work? And there's lots of things, there's distraction, poor light, telling a story, lack of atmosphere, colour cast, no subject. All these things might lose the viewer's attention. And I want to go through a few of the main ones that I saw throughout judging this process. Uh, and the things that I know that I the mistakes that I make as I'm taking photos as well. This is subjective, this is just my honest opinions, and you've just gotta take them with a pinch of salt. You know, if you don't agree with them, then that's fine. You know, you might think differently than I do about a particular image, but I feel like, um, you know, these were things that were echoed amongst the other judges as well, so it wasn't just, just my opinion. Okay, onto the first one, and that's balance. So if we look at this image here by Oscar, you can see, and we had quite a lot of images like this where there was something quite close to the edge of the frame or the dominant elements of the image were towards one side of the frame and they weren't balanced very easily on the other side of the frame. And if you draw a line down the center of this frame, then you'll see that on the right hand side, not much happens. On the left hand side, there's the mountain, the wave crashing and the light. And so, I feel like your eye just drifts to the left of this. I mean, Oscar's created an amazing capture of this wave. I feel like you know the foreground isn't isn't too bad. That you know the light's amazing. Um, he's probably got roughly about the right height. I think the camera position is not too bad, but maybe just shifting to the left a little bit might have helped this image. Um, you know this is another example from Nikki here of again something that's just not quite balanced. You can see that. And I think Nikki pointed this out when I asked her if I could use the, the image. She said, yeah, is, is the rock too close to the right-hand side? And I think the rock probably is a little bit too close to the right-hand side, but I think you'd have got away with that probably just about if there was something else that balanced it on the left-hand side. You know, if the sun was coming from the left-hand side or something, then that would have probably balanced it. But it is a good idea to leave a little bit more of a gap on the right-hand side. But again, on this image, just, you know, just skirting around, now there might have been a telegraph pole or something, or 10 people stood there, so she might not be able to do that, easy said, when you're a judge. But, you know, just moving around to the right might have just helped that and just helped to add balance. Again, a shot from Oscar here. This almost works, I think, apart from that bottom right-hand side. It's a beautiful shot. That light is amazing. You know, the shutter speed's amazing. The, the composition's almost there, but I feel that that bottom right just distracts you a little bit. And because that distracts you, it becomes unbalanced. And, and I feel like the, the image just feels like it's just weighted towards the, 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 the right hand side a little bit because that's where the, the dominant light um, blue colour is that's just drawing your eye as well. This image by Finn who won the Seascapes category is a good example of an image that I, I feel that there's a lot of balance in this image. Um, and. The, the, the waves work really nicely together to balance each other out. There's a lot of symmetry in those waves. There's a really nice diagonal going through the image which helps to balance the two sides. Di diagonals, I find, 
really help to connect elements within an image. But also we've got the lighthouse that's creating a separate diagonal opposing to the other diagonal with the uh, bird. Add on top of that the amazing atmosphere, the amazing capture, everything else. You know, this becomes something that just captures your attention. You just want to keep looking at it because there's nothing to draw your eye away. Everything just is in really nice balance. The next thing is distractions. And um, this was probably the number one thing within the images that came in to the, to the competition where just a little bit moving the camera left or right or just even sometimes there was just like a little bit of a branch that came in and they could have just spotted it out. Um, you know, it's such a shame. There was a, a, a few images that we were looking at and we were just saying, oh, I wish we could just crop that off and it would have made it so much stronger. Uh, but obviously we can't do that. But I can talk about it now and, and hopefully that, that'll help out. This is a good example here from Xavier of these beautiful mountains, a really, really nice light hitting these mountains. I really like the purples and the greens. You know, that, that, that contrast between those colors is really, really nice. But I feel like that bright spot of that cloud, again, just pulls your eye. You just wanna go there all the time. And that's a distraction. So, you know, you wanna look at the image, but you just get, you just being pulled to the right-hand side, which is such a shame, because I really, I really like this, this image. And then again, a lovely shot, some beautiful light in this shot of Yosemite, of Yosemite Falls. I like the idea of having this foreground. The bottom stick of it, really, that's holding up this big log is slightly distracting. And also the foreground just sort of merges a little bit into the background, so it becomes a little bit of distraction, I think. I feel like if, if you'd have just gone uh, a little bit higher, Gary, um, then, and gone to the right a little bit, maybe you could have created a nice diagonal from this log that would have worked a little bit better and also created a little bit more separation between the log and the background. But it's mainly that sort of V-shaped smaller log at the bottom that just distracts you a little bit. I'm being really pernickety here, uh, but I do think that that is something that's slightly distracting in this image. You can also get distraction by not separating the components within an image. And in this shot here from Harold, I think that's a good example. We've got the rocks and the mountain in the background. And because Harold's quite low, the mountain rocks and the foreground rocks almost sort of blend together. Now, there's lots of different ways you can separate them. You could separate them with mist or atmosphere. You could separate them with different light, so different light on the background to the foreground. So say it was like at dusk and there was light just being cast on the foreground, but it wasn't hitting the background anymore. Or you could just go a little bit higher so that the foreground rocks are separated by the water in the background. And that is probably the thing that Harold could have done here. And, and camera positioning is really, really important in, in photography and just thinking about where you're gonna position your camera. There was again a lot of entries about that and we'll speak about it a little bit later. On to the next point, and that's all about having some sort of subject in your image. Um, now, it's a, it's a tricky one, this, because you don't always have a subject. So if you're shooting an abstract, then quite often there isn't a subject. But if there are elements within your image, like a landscape, then it's got to be obvious where you want the viewer to go within the image. And there was quite a lot of images where that wasn't the case. And this is a good example here from Christian. And I think it's... it's an amazing shot of this foreground. It's got some lovely clouds. Um, the light's amazing. So, you know, this is the type of shot that I, I take all the time. And, you know, I think, oh God, this is amazing. I'm in, I'm in the field, I've set up, I've got this beautiful sort of diagonal line of this line of this golden light hitting the rock and I'm getting really excited about it. And then I get back to my studio and I think, why doesn't that quite work? And I think it's because there's just no, clear point of reference for the viewer. So on this particular shot, I feel like that hole with the water in it could have been slightly more central, and that would have been then the focus of the image. And because at the moment, I feel like that the foreground takes you into the background, but the background's 
a little bit nondescript, there's nothing in the background. So you look at the clouds and then you're sort of lost a little bit. You don't really know where to go in the image. And, and I think, again, if you're trying to create an image that captures the viewer's attention, that's where it's really, really important. Again, this is a good example, I think, from Carmaine. Again, beautiful light here. She's thought about a lovely diagonal leading line going up to this mountain in the background. But I just don't think the elements within the image are quite strong enough. So it's it's sort of, this is the type of image that I feel that I get again quite a lot where the conditions change, you get amazing conditions. Maybe you're driving your car or you're walking back from a location and you think, oh, I really wanna take a photo of these conditions, but you haven't quite got the subject or the, 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 the exact composition to match that. And then that means that you get an image that on first glance looks really strong, but then when you look at it again and again, it doesn't really draw your attention in and, and capture your attention as much. And again, I'm being quite critical because I actually quite like this image. It's not, it's not that it is a poor image, it's just that I feel that when you put it alongside some of the stronger images within the competition, then you can see that they capture attention a little bit, a little bit more. And you know, what I'm trying to do is talk about how you can elevate your photography. So if you're enjoying the video so far and you like having my videos back, then please give it a thumbs up. Uh, I really appreciate it. It'll massively help the video. And if you're not subscribed, then consider subscribing. Okay, on to the next one, and that's cropping. This was the thing that was probably the most frustrating for me when I was looking through the images, because there were so many amazing images that I just thought, oh, if it had just been cropped slightly differently, I feel like it would have been a stronger image. Um, and crop in both ways really, either overcropped or undercropped. So this was an example from Anders of a stunning uh, desert, some nice light on it, a beautiful curve here. And then the sky was just like a really thin sliver at the top. What you'll find is that if you have things that are very close to the edge of a frame, um, then they become more and more distracting. So if like the mountain range here is very close to the edge of the frame, there's only a little bit of sky, then the mountain range doesn't have room to breathe. It's not that there's not enough sky, it's that the mountain range is too close to the top and it doesn't have room to breathe. So it needs that room to breathe. And also I feel that the colors and the dominance of this curve and the beautiful sand needs to be balanced a little bit by the sky, which is a similar color. So that I feel like it was just cropped a little bit too heavily. And it's easy to say that because I suspect um, in Anders' case here, that he probably didn't have enough wide enough lens on or, or something like that. But I feel like on this occasion, just a vertical um, shot would have probably worked better than the horizontal shot that, that was shown here. And then there's this shot here from Antonia, which was stunning. I mean, what an amazing shot. I don't know where this is. It's probably in Tuscany, is it? And this was one of the shortlisted images. So it didn't get quite get to the commended stage, but it was a shortlisted image. And then when we were going through the images again, it was it was the distraction of this right hand sort of hedge, really. And if, if you just crop it, you can see that that just makes a much simpler image. Quite often, images need to be cropped more than what I, I, I see. Um, and, and people try and tell too much of a story. It's better, I think, to leave a little bit more to the imagination, simplify an image. Simple images always do better. Again, if you look at the winner of this um, year's World Landscape Photographer, it's a really, really simple image, um, but it's such a powerful image. You know, it's, it's got a lot of mood to it, you know, and it tells a, a really great story about these birds fluttering up, and you, know, you, can, you can almost build your own story around that image. And it's because it's so simple. The more things you add, the more difficult it gets for somebody to interpret that image and put their own story on that image. Okay, on to the next one. The next one is camera positioning. And this is a shot from Emil um, of the Lupins in Iceland. And what an, what an amazing um, shot. I mean, it is, it's beautiful. The clouds are beautiful. The Lupins are really nice. But I, I feel like, this is a good example of you either need to go a little bit lower and have the loopings really dominant or you need to go a little bit higher and just think about where those loopings are. 
a ca camera positioning on this will make a really big difference because the fact the lupins in sort of the middle left of the picture go over the island in the background, it gets quite complicated there, there's a lot going on. And when there's a lot going on in an image, again, it becomes a distraction. So you go to that part of the image quite a lot. And I feel like that was the case in quite a lot of images again, where you know camera positioning, just small change in the camera positioning would make a really big difference. This is a good example from Tristan, where it's a beautiful, beautiful image of this mountain range in the background. He's tried to include a really nice leading line going where this bush is, but unfortunately the bush just touches that reflection. And again, where it, that, that reflection touches, it just is a little bit uncomfortable, but if, if Tristan just moved just a little bit to the right, and I don't know what's to the right, it could have been a massive hole or something, <laughs> but it would have just separated those elements. I've done this so many times, Tristan, so don't, you know, don't feel bad about doing that because it happens to me all the time, um, but it's definitely something that helps the image out. So when you're taking the photo, just think, okay, all the elements in this photo, have they all got space or they all, you know, what about the edges? Is everything just nice and separated? Is there anything that's going to, going to be distracting? If you think about all those things, then you're going to end up with a better image. The final point is editing. And on that, I just want to show you a top trick. Um, but <laughs> editing is um, something that I think makes such a big difference. And again, there was, I think it's a separate video altogether um, that I, I do want to make at some point because I think there's a lot of things, mistakes that people make in editing that are easily rectified. And this is one from Gary and he actually got uh, a commended image and he was third in Seascapes. But this is an image that didn't quite make it. So <laughs> he did quite well. But so I can be critical about this one and show you one of his better ones that actually came third in seascapes. But I, I feel like this is just a stunning, stunning seascape in terms of this beautiful leading line. But I feel like the background just, the background sky is just almost too bright and it becomes a little bit too distracting. And you see it more when you make this image smaller and smaller and smaller. A good idea is just look at an image smaller or take that image and just turn it upside down when you're editing it and see if there's anything distracting. Because if you turn this image upside down, you see that that, that bright spot really jumps out at you. And I feel like just toning that down a little bit would have massively helped that. But, you know, Gary knows what he's doing. He's an amazing, accomplished photographer. I've seen some of his work on his website um, because I obviously saw his name come up a lot when we looked at, unanonymized everything and we saw that he'd done quite well. And this is one of his that came third. And I feel like there's more, a more toned down view to the sun in the background here that just works so much better and doesn't become a dominant part of the image. But you can look at that quite easily doing this top trick. So onto the top tip. So this is, when you want to look at luminosity values and just to see where the eye goes, often you look at an image and it's difficult. There's a lot of colors in the image or you know, there's a lot of shapes and you just can't quite determine whether the brightness values are correct in the image and whether you're just being distracted by certain things within the image. So this is a really top tip. You can do it in Photoshop. And I just wanna go through two steps to, to do it. So we'll do it with this image here first of Gary's. So, Okay, the first thing you do is go to image, mode, grayscale. Then you want to add a new layer down here and click posterize and just set it to four levels. And you get an image like this, which looks a bit weird, but it's basically looking at the luminosity values on what it determines based on that conversion to a grayscale. Now there's lots of different ways you can convert it to a grayscale, but I find that this is a good way of doing it. Uh, and you can see that you can see those leading lines really well, but you can see in this particular image of Gary's that there's a very strong bright spot, which we obviously knew about in that top left area. Where it comes into its own is an image like this. So this is an image that I took in Harris where I just couldn't quite work out. I just felt that there was something just a little bit distracting and not quite working with this image. And if I apply that, I just created an action for it. So if I just apply that to this, you can see now that it sort of brings out this ridge here. 
and it makes this more dominant. And you can see that this is quite a dominant feature within the image. And I think that distracts your eye when you're looking at the image. So when I go back to the image here, this that I didn't see at first becomes quite a distracting element in the image. And that just helps you find those elements that are perhaps distracting and makes it just gel a little bit more. It's almost like that thing you can't quite put your finger on. And then, you know, you can apply it to lots of things. So again, if I just apply it to this image here, you can see that, you know, there's a very bright area over here and it's only the person on the cliff here that's just creating that balance to sort of balance off the bright area of the scene where the sunset is and um, the right hand side of the image um, with this amazing leading line. Without that person, I feel like it wouldn't be quite balanced. So that's the top tip. I hope you found that useful. Um, before I go, I just wanna thank Squarespace who are the sponsor of this week's video and also they kindly donated World Landscape Photographer websites. So what that meant is that I could quickly and easily build the website, take entrance um, for the competition, and also announce the results as easily as possible. I mean, I did it <laughs> lying on my back on my bed after an operation, so it must be pretty simple. Using Squarespace, I, I was able to quickly change the homepage. I used the blog feature to actually set up press releases within the section as well. And it was just it was just easy. So if you're looking to build your own website, you're looking to sell a product, or you know, you're just looking to create a portfolio of your images, then make sure you check out Squarespace. Okay, it's fantastic to be back. Uh, I've got loads of ideas now for videos. Uh, hopefully I'll be back in the field again in the next um, maybe month or so. Thanks ever so much for watching. And until next Sunday, bye.